Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have Halloween tear tray DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot. I have three different themes today. We're going to do a black and white Halloween tear tray. We're going to do a beach Halloween tear tray, and we're going to do a farmhouse themed Halloween tear tray. So lots of inspiration for you. The first one we're going to do here is the black and white one. So I picked up one of these little um, coffins. They're made out of plastic. They have a little skeleton on them from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna weigh it down with just some rocks just because I want to stand it up on its side and I want it to be heavier on the bottom and not, you know, tip over easily. I did notice that mine was cracked. Um, you couldn't tell because it was in plastic but that's okay, it'll just make it look older, right? <laughs> I just hot glue on the lid and then I have to fill in that hole there because it really was cracked up on that corner. And this is the only one that I had, but we're gonna make it work. So what I'm gonna do is just go over the entire coffin with some black acrylic. And then I will go back in and paint the skeleton a white color. So we'll have that black and white. The tear tray that I'm decorating today is my white tear tray. So I already have that going with the white. So I want to add a lot of black items. Now it is going to take a couple of coats to make the plastic, the clear plastic black using acrylic paint. But I'm just doing like the top and the sides first. And um, then I can kind of go back in and touch up a second coat if I need to. And I don't really like the fact that you can see in the back, you can see all the rocks in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the back of it too because it is gonna be standing on a tear tray so you might see the back of it. So lots of painting on this, but otherwise this was a really simple DIY. I'm gonna make sure that my coffin's good in black and I kinda had to fill this area and again, my speckle was not holding up too well. But that's okay, we'll just put a little bit more in there. And then I'm just using a tiny brush to kind of distress paint the little skeleton on here. Trying not to get um, that white paint on the black, but it's okay if I do here and there, that'll be easy enough to touch up. And it's not gonna be like a very precise paint job on this, but um, something cool looking. So once I get that painted white, I'm gonna go back in and um, paint any of the areas that I got any of the white on black and the area that I had to respeckle just to touch it up a little bit. And then whenever you're painting like the white on the black, it's gonna kind of look a little bit grayish. Um, and so I do touch it up with a little bit more white here and there until I'm happy with how he looks. This was a really quick, easy little coffin DIY, and it's a nice tall piece I'm gonna put on the top tier of my tear tray. So this is how it turned out. Super cute, and we're gonna stand it up right back here. And this is my two tier rectangular tray that we're decorating today. Now the next item I got at the Target Dollar Spot for $3, it's a little black tree, and it's special because it lights up with little orange lights, which I wanted a few items to light up since this is a Halloween tear tray. I thought that would be fun. And it's covered with black glitter and it's the perfect size, I think, for a tear tray. And it's nice and tall too. So we're going to put that in the back too on the top tier. It's going to balance out the coffin nicely. Now to keep filling up the tear tray, I wanna do some smaller items. And look, I finally found fairy garden items from the Halloween section at Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna kind of raise it up so you can see them because they're really tiny. With one of these Dollar Tree signs, I'm just going to cut in half. And I found these are the fairy garden um, decorations from Target Dollar Spot. They're a little cheaper. They're a dollar a package instead of a dollar 25. But I got the ghost and the black cat. I thought those would be super cute. 
I want to do like a little spooky forest theme to put in front of that little spooky black tree. So this little welcome sign with a little black crow on it would be cute. And then I thought maybe we'd have like a little cemetery in the background. And I found these great little tombstones from the fairy garden section. I've been hunting for the fairy garden Halloween stuff all season. They just got these in at some of my stores. So if you haven't seen them either, you might want to check your stores again. Some items just come in later than others for some reason. And then I'm just going to kind of arrange it on here. I don't want it to be too symmetrical. And then we are just going to hot glue all of the little fairy garden pieces down to that Dollar Tree sign that I cut in half. And that is just to lift them all up so you can see them because they are super tiny. And I don't want the sides of the tear tray to block that. Now I wasn't really happy with the paint job on my little ghost. So I tried to touch it up with a white paint pen, but you can kind of tell where I did that. So I'm just gonna go in with some white paint and just touch the whole little ghost up and repaint the face on until I'm happy with it. What I'm gonna do is sit this on the tear tray in front of the little spooky tree. And then we are gonna cover the entire floor of the tear tray with that brown moss from the Dollar Tree to make it look like a spooky forest floor. So there are five little items and it's gonna fit perfectly here since I cut it in half, it's nice and small right in front of the little black spooky tree. And this is that moss I was talking about. It's like the reindeer moss, but it's brown. It's extremely messy, <laughs> but I like it because it reminds me of like what the forest floor would look like in fall. And so I'm just gonna break that apart and I'm gonna fill in all of the bottom of that sign that we glued everything to. We're also going to just fill up any parts of the bottom of that tear tray around the tree and the coffin and stuff like that. We're not done with the top tier, but um, we're done to a point where I can go ahead and put all this moss in there. And I think it gives it a nice creepy vibe. Now this DIY is so easy. You can get a four pack of the little plastic witch's cauldrons at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna leave it just as is. And then um, to make it glow, I'm just gonna use a little um, battery operated candle from Dollar Tree. It'll be nice and safe in that plastic cauldron. The color is perfect and it's gonna be another item that's gonna light up on my tear tray. It's nice and small, so I'm gonna put it right here in front. And I have a witch, I wanna sit next to it. I got this great little black crow for $3 at Target Dollar Spot the other day. He has so many fantastic details. He's really well made. It's a little fluffy black crow. He's got like a little orange scarf around his neck. He's got little rope legs, a little felt witch hat, and he's even got like leather um, wings, little star and moon design on his back. And I think he's so cute. I wanted to do something fun with him. Now, his feet were kind of falling apart on me. So what I'm gonna do are just shorten his legs a little bit. They were a little too long anyway. And so I just trim those up and reattach the feet. I wanna sit this little witch um, crow on the very front of my tear tray next to that little cauldron. Like this is the little witch and I think this is gonna be a little fun touch. I really like the leather wings and stuff on him. The details are fantastic. He's gonna be kind of the star of the top tier here. I first set him like this, like facing the cauldron, and then I kind of liked him better the other way. So I'm gonna kind of switch him up. So he is right there in front of the pole on the top of the tier tray. And I think that that's pretty much all we need for the top of this tier tray. It is pretty full. Let me give you a little look around since these items were really tiny. So you can kind of get a better look of those. And some really simple black and white Halloween DIYs. And I really love that bird. I think he's so cute. Target Dollar Spot has some really cute plush animals like that for seasonal holidays anymore. Okay, we're moving on to the bottom tier. I picked up one of these just wood slice houses. Um, from Dollar Tree. I prefer these if you can get them like this because they're so easy to paint, but you could use any of the wood houses from Dollar Tree. 
And the reason I love this is because I can just do one coat of paint. It's going to be a perfect coverage. I go ahead and paint the sides and the roof line too, just to make it look nicer. One coat of black paint. Then I'm going to go in with my white paint pen. These are the Posca paint pens. I picked these up at Target. Um, you can get them on Amazon too. That's where I used to get them. I think I do have them listed in my Amazon shop. I love them. You can see how well they paint. And I'm just doing kind of a Ray Dunn font. I started in the middle so I could get it kind of centered on both words. And I'm just spelling out the word haunted house in white against my black house sign. And then I wanted something to decorate like the top of the house. So I decided to use some of these rub on transfers from Dollar Tree. And since it's a haunted house, I thought we could add just a little ghost up there. I was gonna paint something on there with my paint pen, but I remembered I had these and this is gonna be even better. These are the rub on transfers. So you just kind of have to peel and stick and I couldn't find my scraper. So I was trying to find something else to scrape it. You just have to have something. You can even use your fingernail if you need to, um, to scrape it on and we have a little ghost. Now I thought it looked even cuter if I gave it like a roof. And so I'm gonna use just a couple of pieces of driftwood base filler from Target to do the roof. I picked out two longer pieces. Um, that would be, I would only have to use one piece on each side. So I just hot glue the first piece on and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side. And this was so easy to put together. I love the black and white, the simplicity of it. If you want your words to be perfect, you could always use your Cricut, but I think this looks pretty cool and it's nice and tall. So we're gonna put it back here in the back of our bottom tier to start the decorating. Now I wanted something in the back that lit up and I picked up one of these little black plastic lanterns at Dollar Tree. It's not specifically for Halloween, but I thought it looked creepy. And then I can even add a little Halloween rub on on there. I'm gonna do like a little black crow, like right here on the front and just scrape that on. Actually, that might be a raven. I don't know. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> They're both black, but I just put that on the front just for a little Halloween vibe. And uh, I'm gonna put that in the very back here in the center to kind of fill in this area back here. And then I wanted to do a really simple like forest scene sign. And so I picked up one of these black frames at Dollar Tree. This is the one that has the two pieces of glass in it where you can kind of do a floating image. It does have a like a hanger on the back that I don't really need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that out. And then I designed a really simple image of a black silhouette of a creepy tree with a little bat hanging from it. And I will include the printable if you wanna recreate this in the description below. And I just take my frame apart with my two panels of glass. I'm gonna use one of those for a template to cut this out. I just wanted this to be really simple, so I printed it out just on white cardstock, and I'm just gonna use a pencil to trace out the glass so I can cut that down to size. Now the frame itself said to do like a four by four image, um, which is what the little display picture was, and then it could be like a floating picture, but I didn't really want mine to be a floating picture, so I went ahead and cut it to the edges of the glass, and I think that's fine. And I love this frame. How easy is this to DIY? I just sandwich the image in between the two glass panels. And then I just need a way to make it stand up. It's a little tippy. And so I cut down some more of that sign that we cut down earlier, just cause I needed a little wood block and I couldn't find my little Jenga blocks. But I hot glue that on the back just to give it a little bit st more stability. So it will stand up on its own on the tear tray. And here's our little creepy black tree. I think it's gonna be perfect to fill out the bottom of this black and white tear tray scene. And I had to add the little bat over there because I thought that was cute. Have you guys seen this at Dollar Tree? Look at this cute little mummy bird. It says Boo. He has a little bat headband and it's a little white bird wrapped uh, like in cloth, like a mummy. I saw this and I had to have it and it goes perfectly with the black and white theme. It does have some orange, but we're gonna have some orange here and there. Um, just because it's Halloween. It did have lots of loose strings on it, so I'm just trimming it up a little bit to try to make it look a little bit better. 
But how cute is this little guy? I think it's so fun and creative, and it was only $1.25. I just, I think once I cut a string, then another string was there. <laughs> but this is how he turned out. And I think he's ready to go. I'm going to put him over here to the side so you can really see him because he's so cute. And he's the perfect size there. He doesn't really block things behind him too much. Now, I think these are new this year. These little um, gnome picks. I think they're so cute. These are the ghost ones. I think they also have Frankenstein. Um, and jack-o'-lantern ones. And what I'm going to do is just use it for a little mini gnome for my tear tray. All I do is break the little pick off of it. Um, I did have to get some pliers in there to make sure I got all the stick out of there. And then you can sand it up on its own with the beard. But I thought it would be a little stronger if I put like a little piece of wood in there. So I'm just going to using a little wood block from the Dollar Tree and gluing that right inside his beard. That's going to weigh it down a little bit. Kind of give it more stability when I go to stand it up on its own. But how cute is that? It's My eyes were a little loose on mine, so I'm just going to glue those down a little bit. And the other one kind of has a dirty nose, doesn't he? But I think they're so cute. I did pick up the Frankenstein ones and the Jack-o'-lantern one too. Because you never know when you're going to need a cute little gnome. And they're all pre-made and everything. So... He's kind of short. I'm going to put him over here on the side. I can always move him around if I need to. Okay, I wanted to make a quick, easy Halloween sign for the front of the bottom tier tray. And I'm going to use one of these little square signs from Dollar Tree. These are the perfect size for a tier tray. I just pop out the panel. And I've had trouble painting those and using rub-on transfers on them. So I'm going to try some of this chalkboard sticker because I couldn't find any black cardstock. And I absolutely loved how this turned out, so I might use this all the time. I just trace out the size of the sign on this black chalkboard sticker. It comes in a package with two of these long pieces, and they're just found, like, with the stickers and stuff like that at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to trim this down to size. All you got to do is peel and stick. And this, since it's a chalkboard finish, it just had a really great smooth image to give me a great image to craft with. So I just put that on there. I did a pretty good job of getting it on there straight. And then I thought we would use some of these little rub-on transfers. I thought we could do a little Halloween scene with all kinds of traditional Halloween items, but I didn't really want any of the black items because I didn't think they show up too well on that black sign. So we have like the ghost, I thought maybe a tombstone would be really cute on here. So we'll put one of those over there. And then we'll fill it up with some more of these items too. I'm going to go ahead and peel and stick and rub these on. I found my scraper. <laughs> it works way better if you use one of these little Cricut scrapers from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to have like the little ghost like floating up here above the tombstone. But I kind of want to fill all this in. I don't really want to add words or anything to it. I just want it to be some really fun, like watercolor looking images um, to decorate the sign that represent Halloween. So we're going to do a little jack-o'-lantern down here. And then for the other corner, I was trying to decide if I was going to do a bat or not. I didn't think you'd be able to see it, but I went ahead and went for it because I really wanted to have a bat on there. And you can see it. Then I'm just going to glue this back into my sign. And that's when I was like, you know, I think I can probably add one more thing, but it has to be tiny. So I did like a little potion bottle over here. And a quick, easy little Dollar Tree sign for my tear tray. It's so cute. I love those little rub-on transfers. How adorable are those? We're going to put that right in front. It's nice and small. And then we're going to go in and fill in the bottom tier with the brown moss as well. Just kind of scattering that all over to kind of give it that same feel that we had on the top. And even though it's super messy, it does really work as a great filler. And it really gives you a fun vibe for Halloween. I've only got a few more pieces to put in here, but it was a good time to go ahead and put this in here. Scattering it all over. Now I wanted to do like something else black and kind of creepy so I decided one of these giant fuzzy tarantulas 
from Dollar Tree would be really fun. This one's really big. You might want to do a smaller one because it's not really going to fit. But that's okay because we can always kind of have it like it's crawling in the tear tray. Oh gosh, that thing creeps me out. I'm so scared of big fuzzy spiders like that. <laughs> and put him right there in front. Now I was trying to decide if it was full or not. I thought I needed one more thing. And this is a fairy garden item from Dollar Tree too. It's just some stacked jack-o'-lanterns. Something small that I can kind of put in the front corner here where there really isn't anything yet. And now I think it's complete. Let me give you a quick look here at what we just did on the bottom tier tray and the tier tray is complete. So this is just my black and white Halloween tier tray with a little orange thrown in here, a little bit of a spooky a forest vibe and all the traditional items that you would think for Halloween. We got black cats, ghosts, tombstones, spooky forest, all kinds of really fun little DIYs and finds from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot. And I think they all work well together. I really like black and white for Halloween. I've done that a lot of my DIYs this year. It just looks so classy. It kind of goes with like any kind of color scheme you've got going in your house. And I was kind of concerned because this was the only tear tray that I had free. It was my white one. And I really wanted to do like more of a black um tear tray for halloween but i think we made it work by adding so many punches of black and that is the top and here is the bottom our little haunted house our little mummy bird late lantern is way back there our little fairy garden jack-o-lanterns i'm so glad i found those our little diy sign with the rub on transfers and our little ghost gnome, our tarantula. We have our little spooky forest sign back there with like the little bat and a little bit of moss everywhere covering the bottom of the tear tray. And this is how it all looks together. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think I'm gonna have that in my living room. Hey, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks as well, as well as shout outs in my videos. And I really appreciate your support. Okay, the next tier tray, we are gonna do a beach Halloween theme on this tier tray. We're gonna start with some of this great mesh ribbon from Dollar Tree. In the ivory color, it really reminds me of fishnet and so, we're gonna use that to kind of decorate my tear tray to kind of give that fishnet vibe. Now I'm decorating my three tear tray, my galvanized metal one from Target. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap that all the way around my tear. I like to decorate them with ribbon and stuff like that. I really think it can kind of add to a theme. And I just do that with a little bit of hot glue cutting them down to size. And we're gonna do that on all three tiers. And it's gonna give us a nice start for like a beach theme with that coastal vibe of the fishnet. So this is what it looks like so far. And this is a big one. So we have lots of decorating to do for this tear tray. Now the first item we're gonna do is a little witch's broom here. These come in a three pack at Dollar Tree. They have a little bow on them, but super easy to take off. They're just like a little bread tie. And we're gonna do um, a really fun little DIY with this. My tear tray has a hole in the top where it used to have a hook, which kind of got in the way. So I kind of took that hook off my tear tray, but it has a hole in it. So I thought it would be perfect. We could have this little broom going right through that hole, and then we could have a little witch flying on it. So I trimmed it down to size a little bit, and then to cut down the witch, I wanted it to be a witch mermaid. And so I'm gonna have to kind of custom make this. And I'm gonna do that with using my Cricut and a little bit of the black poster board from Dollar Tree. And I have this great like merwitch um, file. I will try to figure out a way to share that with you in the comments below. But what I did was just put that black poster board on my Cricut cutting mat. And we're gonna cut out that little merwitch, two of them like that. 
And then we can kind of sandwich that one on each side of the little broomstick and it'll look like the little Merwitch is riding on the broomstick. It even kind of looks like she's sitting because she's got like a hand back, right? And then the little um, broom can go just like this. And then we can actually have that kind of flying across the air on the top of the tear tray. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the top part with just a glue stick. Go ahead and put my little broomstick in the top of my tear tray so it looks like she's flying. And then put some more glue on the bottom, kind of sandwiching her around that where she will stand up just like that. And this is a really fun theme since we're mixing beach together with Halloween. Now I'm gonna display it here on my kitchen table. And I had a black and white um, Buffalo check runner that I had got at Target Dollar Spot as well. And the first DIY we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna take a $3 Dollar Spot ghost mug from Dollar Spot and a little succulent from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make this little ghost mug into a simple planter just by adding the plant in there. But it is gonna need a little something to help it out. So I'm gonna cut down some Dollar Tree foam and just stick, stick the little succulent plant down inside. And we have a really cute little ghost mug. Since this is going on my kitchen table, I wanna do a lot of mugs and stuff like that they kind of go with the kitchen feel. So we're gonna put that right there next to our little Merwitch flying. The next item is a little black cat that I got at Dollar Tree. This was pretty cool. I don't think it was necessarily Halloween because they had them in different colors, but I thought the black one really looked like Halloween, but I wanted to look like he's kind of caught up in a fishing net. And so I'm gonna use some of that like ivory creepy cloth and just kind of put that around his neck, kind of like this little black cat got caught up in some fishing net. And we're gonna put the little black cat right up here, super cute and just the right size. Now, the next item we're gonna DIY is one of these little school candle holders from Dollar Tree. They're kind of like a white unfinished ceramic with like little kind of goldish spiders on there but we're gonna give ours a little beach makeover. I am using um, Caribbean blue and we are going over the whole thing. I'm trying to remember if this is Caribbean blue. Yes, it, I think it's definitely Caribbean blue. And I just go over the entire thing, trying to make sure I get in the teeth in any of the areas under where the candle is gonna be as well. Then I'm gonna go in with a black paint pen and we're gonna paint those spiders back on, but this time in black, because I wanna do like a blue, black and white theme on this one. Definitely bringing in the blue color for the beach vibes, but I think black and white looks really good with that. I can only get so far with the paint pen and I really thought I needed some acrylic paint. So I did go back in with some acrylic paint to paint the body of the spiders and kind of fill them in a little bit. And now I just need to find a candle to put in here. I'm actually gonna do one of these little tea light candles from Dollar Tree, a real candle, just popping that right in the top. But it's gonna be on my tear tray, so I'm probably not gonna be able to burn it. But I think a real candle always looks a little bit better than the battery operated ones, if you can see it like that. And that is gonna finish off the top part of the tear tray with a little skull candle. And I was worried that you couldn't really see it. So I'm gonna pop it up a little bit with a Dollar Tree wood stem so you can see him a little bit better. And then I thought a little coastal touch, why not a little starfish to go with the beach Halloween theme. That's just a starfish from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Okay, next up I found this great mummy mug at uh, Target for $5. These are back like in their kitchen section and we're gonna make this a flower arrangement as well using one of these beautiful blue succulent picks from Dollar Tree. 
Again, I kind of need something to put it in. So I'm gonna cut down some floral foam from Dollar Tree first and another really simple little flower arrangement for the tear tray. And again, we've got that coffee cup theme going and I love these Halloween mugs. They are so cute. I love to decorate with them. So here's the little mummy mug, $5 from Target with a little Dollar Tree succulent inside. And then I thought we'd put down some creepy cloth to kind of make it look creepy, kind of like the fishing net vibe, fill in that area on the second tear tray. And here is our little mummy mug. He's a really nice size. He takes up a pretty good um, amount of area, but he's not too tall. Now I also got this Witch's Brew um, mug for $3 at the Target dollar spot. It's a little black cauldron, so it's got the black and white theme going for it. I think it's really cute. I thought we could fill it up to make it look like an ocean potion. So I'm gonna take some paper towels. You can use anything to kind of fill up the volume of it. And then I'm using some of these little blue and white wood beads from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna fill that up, kind of make it look like bubbles, bubbling out of the top of the cauldron like a potion. I really only want the soft blue and the white ones cause that's gonna go with my color scheme today. So I'm kind of picking those colors out and filling it up as full as I can get it. And that's our little witch's brew cauldron full of bubbles. We're gonna put that one right over here. I told you I was gonna go heavy with the coffee mugs on this one. And I absolutely love the, the Halloween coffee mugs at Target, they're my favorite. So just kind of turning some of the beads so you can't really see the holes in them as much, but it's kind of impossible since they do have holes in them but just kind of arranging it until I'm happy with it. Now, the next item for the tear tray is a Dollar Tree ceramic ghost. These are the ones that light up with the little cut out eyes. This one was missing the little light up candle, but that's okay, I still bought it because it's absolutely adorable. Now, I wanted to give it a little bit of a coastal touch, so I thought we could use some of this Dollar Tree blue ribbon and give this little ghost blue eyes to kind of go with our theme. So I just cut it down to size so that I can just put it inside. And I'm gonna do a little hot glue on the inside of his eyes and then stick the ribbon through there and glue that to the back so it looks like our little ghost has blue eyes. A little easier said than done, but I was able to get it in there. And since it doesn't light up, this is another fun um, thing that you can do with this little ghost. So I'm gonna pop all the fabric in there. I kind of used a lighter. I needed something long and skinny to kind of press it in there. And then we're gonna do the same thing here on the other eye. I'm putting hot glue along the inside of the eye to kind of catch the ribbon and smoothing that out inside. And I finally got it in there. There's our little ghost with blue eyes looking super beachy. And then I thought one of these little starfish from Amazon on his head would be so cute. So I glued a little blue one on there. And I always have those little starfish linked in my Amazon shop in the description below this video. And there's our little Dollar Tree ghost, all dressed up for a day at the beach. Now this is a big tear tray, so we have lots of items. I wanted to do a large sign. So I'm gonna use one of these little wood signs from Dollar Tree. Don't really need the hanger on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. And we're gonna make a custom little beach Halloween sign out of this. Now it does have a word on there, the little galvanized metal home, but with a little heat, you can just pop that off. And it's gonna give you a nice long sign that is gonna be a really good size for a tear tray. So I'm just using some heat to try to get some of that glue off. And we're using the color cloudless and going over this side. You know, I think I might have used cloudless on that school. I was trying to decide earlier if it was cloudless or Caribbean blue, but it probably was cloudless. I love that color, it's my favorite. I have that linked in my Amazon shop as well. You can get it so cheap off Amazon and they send it to you for free. You don't even have to go to Walmart. And then we're gonna use one of these cute little wood ghosts from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna do a custom little um, ghost at the beach sign. Don't really need a hole in the top of this ornament. So I'm just gonna go in and fill that in with a little bit of spackle. 
And then I'm going to paint our little ghost um, ivory with some ivory acrylic and a makeup sponge until I get a good coverage. I really want that white ghost to kind of pop against that blue sign. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to use Dollar Tree letters to um, do a saying on here. So I picked out B-O-O -O for Boo for our ghost. And we're going to paint those black again with a makeup sponge. I love using a makeup sponge to paint these small items from the Dollar Tree. It just works so much better. And we have the word boo that we can add to that. That's going to go with our blue, white, and black theme. That looks great. And then I don't want it to just say boo. I want it to be kind of more of a custom sign. So we're going to add some more to that as well. But it's going to say boo right here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and glue our little ghost on and glue our boo letters on. I love these wood letters at the Dollar Tree. They can be a little hit or miss to find. I always try to stock up on them though, so I always have them in stock. Now for the next line, I'm just gonna freehand with my Sharpie and put from the, in like a skinny font, and then um, start spelling out the word beach. And you could do this with your Cricut, I decided just to freehand mine. I'm just doing some like block letters for the beach so I can go in and fill those in with a black paint pen, make that stand out, be a little bit more bold like our boo word. And that's just because I didn't really have any lettering that small um, to fill it out. An exclamation point will finish it off and we have a boo from the beach. I think this is perfect for our beach Halloween theme. And I just glued a wood block to the bottom to give it a little bit more height so you can see it and read it. And we're gonna sit it right here, finishing off the second tier of our beach Halloween tear tray. Up next, I'm gonna use one of these little uh, metal signs from the Dollar Tree and one of the wood fish from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. This is kind of the big flat fish. Um, I noticed the chunkier ones are probably easier to find, but I really liked this one um, because it was skinny. I thought we could make a really fun Halloween design out of this. And I know you're like a fish. That's not very Halloween, but I'm going to show you how we're going to make this guy Halloween. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the body of him black just by using a makeup sponge and acrylic paint, leaving his head and his tail um, white so that I can go back and paint them blue. It's going to be easier to do that cloudless cover over um, color over white than black. So that's why I kind of avoided that area. Then using a black paint pen, just drawing back on our little fish eye. Now it's starting to look a little bit like Halloween, but I thought we could make it even creepier. So we're going to take some Dollar Tree white rope. This is like the skinnier white rope. And you know, you could do this with some of the macrame cord they have now that might work but I needed a thinner white rope from the Dollar Tree. And so that's why I just unwound the larger rope into three individual pieces. This piece is gonna be the backbone of our little skeleton fish. See, I told you we were gonna make this a Halloween decoration. So I kind of glue that where I think his skeleton would be. And then I'm gonna continue with that unwound piece and cut out little rib pieces here or fish bones and glue those kind of leaning back, veering back towards the tail, just hot gluing one piece on at a time. And then we're gonna do the same thing here on the bottom, just a third of the rope, cutting those down to size and attaching with hot glue, kind of meeting up in the middle, kind of slanting those back. And you can't work with the rope too much because you don't want it to unwind. Um, so I try to cut it once, glue it down and kind of let it be. Now to stand it up, I thought one of these little metal signs from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. I just put hot glue on the metal sign and glue our fish on there, making sure I let that good and dry so that metal we will be strong. And we have a little skeleton fish decoration for the tear tray. It's the blue, white, and black. It's nice and creepy for Halloween because it's a little skeleton fish. And I think it's going to be just the right size to start decorating the bottom of the tear tray. Now I want like a coastal theme. So I had a little palm frond from the Target dollar spot and I thought we would put a couple of those down here to kind of fill in that middle space before we start decorating. 
with our little skeleton fish. I love those little stands. I use those for decorating all of the time. Okay, the next DIY for this tear tray, we're gonna use one of these little slatted wood signs from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna do a custom little um, beach spider sign. So again, we're gonna use my favorite color, cloudless blue. And we are gonna paint this little palette sign, that blue color all over the back of the sign. And then we are gonna flip it over and paint this side too. The reason I did the front and the back it's because this is on my kitchen table, so you're going to be able to see the back. So I really wanted to have the back of my piece finished as well. Then we're going to make spider webs. Now I'm using the twine from like the hardware section at Dollar Tree. But again, you can use the macrame cord for this. But this actually might work better because it is a little bit skinnier. And I'm just hot gluing it to the edges, kind of in a random pattern. So we can spin a web for a spider. And I just keep working until it's pretty full. Gonna do another one going this direction, making sure they all overlap in the same spot there in the middle. And then once I have all like my anchor pieces, I can go in and start working on the middle piece. I just continue that one piece of twine. And when I glue it on, I kind of give it that arched feel, like um, a shape of a spider web. And it can be random. They're not supposed to be perfect. Most spider webs aren't and go all the way around. And then we're gonna do the same thing another time for the second round to finish out the spider web. And then we're gonna put a little spider in our little beach web. And I'm gonna use some of the little fuzzy spiders from Walmart, just because they're the right size. They were cheap too, $1.98 and no glitter on them. I didn't really want any glitter on this one. And so I just hot glued a little black fuzzy spider right there to our web. And then I want this to be a standing sign because it's going to be on my tear tray. So to get it to stand up, I'm taking a Jenga block from five below and gluing that onto the back of our palette sign. But I probably should have waited for my little spider to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and glue him back on too. And this was so easy to do. Our little spider web looks very coastal with that blue palette board behind it. And uh, we were at the beach the other day at Gumbo Limbo. I was visiting my son at college and we went on a boardwalk trail down to the intercoastal and I've never seen so many spiders in my whole life. It was crazy. We even saw a spider eating a crab. Okay, the next item is a Halloween tree from Dollar Tree. It's really cool because it's like black and ivory, so the colors are perfect. And then we can just make it beachy with some starfish and beachy items. So I have these little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. Again, I always have those linked under like the beach supplies in my um, Amazon shop. And we're gonna glue some of the little ivory ones as little ornaments on the tree just by doing a dot of hot glue on the bottle brush tree. And a little Halloween tree is always a little fun idea. I like when they bring these out for other seasons. And then I thought maybe some of these little seashells. These are the little tiny seashells that you get in the glass bottles at Dollar Tree. And we're gonna glue those onto our little Halloween tree like ornaments as well. Just trying to get a good variety of those and kind of randomly scattering those out like ornaments. I decided probably needed another starfish and I kind of decorated the black part because that's really going to stand out the most. And we're going to put that down here on the tear tray. It's a perfect size here next to our palm frond and our little spider web. The next DIY, I thought we would do something fun with mermaids again. So we're gonna do another sign. This is just a wood sign from the Dollar Tree, like a plaque. I like these because they're nice and chunky and they have a finished edge, um, kind of a decorative edge. And we're gonna use that cloudless acrylic color again and um, go all over, painting the edges as well. And we're gonna do a really fun little mermaid sign to kind of go with that merwitch theme that we started at the top of the tear tray. So to do that, we're gonna use the little mermaid tail from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree and a Wicked Witch um, wood sign from the Dollar Tree as well. Combine them together and we'll have another merwitch decor. 
And I'm always looking for a use for those little wood mermaid tails from the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love them. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the hole with a little spackle on the tail because we're not going to need that in there. And we're going to combine these together to decorate that little wooden sign. I always like to give a little texture to my mermaid tails though. So I just go over all of the scales with a hot glue gun. Um, just drawing all of the scales on there. That's going to give us a really nice textured little mermaid tail. I also do it here with like the little longer lines on the tail. The tail fin, I guess. And let that set up and you're going to get just a great texture. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint Wicked. We're going to do it just in black. Acrylic all over again using a makeup sponge. And that's really going to pop against that blue sign. I love those colors together. Now I went ahead and popped this in the fridge just so it would set up faster. And then I'm going to paint it with the sponge as well. Kind of pushing that in, trying to get all the areas underneath all of that great texture that we added to the mermaid tail. And you can see that hot glue technique just really works so well. Now for the wicked part, we're going to put it right about here. And I kind of wanted the tail kind of like it's coming out of the water kind of. So it's also coming out of the top of the sign. I went to my tear tray to make sure that it would fit and it's not going to be too tall because this is the time to make that decision. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue this on the perfect height. And then we have plenty of room for Wicked right underneath. And I'm just going to hot glue that on as well. And we have a cute little Merwitch sign. Perfect for this decorating scheme. Now, with the um, mermaid um, texture, it kind of looks kind of brown um, as is. So I thought we could make that pop a little bit with a little bit of white using a white paint pen and just kind of tracing those all out to make those scales really pop. You could also do that with like a, a sponge or something, but you're going to get a little bit more on your tail. So the paint pen does give you a little bit more precise. And then I thought, you know, it needs a few shells. So I do one of those little starfish and the little seashells from my stash. And I think that looks really cute. Maybe room for one more. And I really want to stay with my blue, white, and black theme. And so I do use a white paint pen to make my starfish just a little bit brighter. And then I want this to be a sanding sign for my tear tray. So again, I'm using a five below jingle block and just hot gluing that to the base of my sign. And we have a custom little Merwitch sign. Super fun for a beach Halloween theme. And it is just the right size to go right about here. And I love how this looks against that black and white buffalo check run around my table. It goes really great together. Now the next DIY, I found this ceramic skeleton um, with like roses on it from Dollar Tree, but it was pink. And so I thought we could make it our custom color scheme. So I just use a tiny brush. We're going to go in and paint all the pink roses black to make them look creepy for Halloween. And then we'll also add a little blue in there as well to keep with our blue, white, and black theme. So this one had a pink base, so we're just going to switch it up to cloudless and make it that beachy blue. And the pink was a little hard to cover, so I did have to go over it with a couple coats so you couldn't see the pink through it anymore. And then I thought we could decorate the base of it with a little bit more of that ivory creepy cloth. I think it looks kind of fun and coastal. I just glued that on there, kind of like it is just gathered up and we can give it some more beachy touches as well with some of these little miniature seashells from Dollar Tree. We're going to kind of scatter those out in the netting and of course the starfish as well. And it looks creepy and cool. It looks way more coastal than it did when it was pink and I love the black roses on it. I think that looks really cool. It's a nice tall piece so it can go right here on the bottom tier in front of that palm frond in the back. And then for a filler, I'm going to use Dollar Tree Sand Dollars and Starfish to fill out the bottom tier. 
And this is how it turned out, our little beach Halloween tear tray. I hope you got some great crafting inspiration out of this. This was really fun to put together. Again, a big fan of all of those Halloween mugs from Target. But we got a lot of little Dollar Tree treasures on here as well. I love the Merwitch theme. I think that's super fun for a beach Halloween. And lots of little fun touches. And the blue, white, and black color scheme is really fun for a Halloween DIY. I love the fact that my little Merwitch is riding her broom at the top. That's super cute too. And we've got lots of ghosts, potions, and skeletons. I think one of my favorite DIYs on this tear tray was my little skeleton fish. So fun to put together and it looked really good. And nice little surprise, it definitely goes with the beach theme. I like the boo from the beach as well. And I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think about this Halloween tear tray DIY idea? Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video, let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked below. We'd love to see you over there. I'd also really appreciate it if you followed my Facebook. I've been trying to get a bonus on there for posting more. And I have that linked below as well as my Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I'm at Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay. Next theme, we're gonna do farmhouse. So I'm doing a three tier tray again. This time I decorated the tiers with some of this burlap and pumpkin ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And the theme on this tier tray is gonna be a farmhouse, very traditional Halloween decor. The first DIY we're starting with here is one of those little wood ghost signs from Dollar Tree. And what I did was just paint that ivory for the ghost. And then I'm staining the base of it with some antique wax by Waverly. I'm also going to distress the ghost with that to make give it that farmhouse feel, wiping off any of the excess stain with a baby wipe. And then I kind of want that ghost shape to pop. So I kind of traced it out with a brown paint pen to give it a little bit more distressing going around the mouth and the eyes as well. And I just wanted a really creepy little cute ghost to get this tear tray started. It's nice and tall, so we're gonna put him right here in the back of the top tier, and we're gonna keep on crafting. Now this already has the black and white buffalo check, and I think that looks really cute. This little sign from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna actually cover up Give Thanks on there with just some burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I also removed the leaves that were on there before. We're gonna switch this up from Thanksgiving to Halloween. And we're gonna do that with one of the little wood Happy Halloween um, signs from the Dollar Tree. And we are just gonna simply paint that with some pumpkin um, chalk paint. And we're gonna go with very traditional colors. So a lot of black and white like buffalo check, but mixed together with some traditional orange for Halloween. So this is a very traditional tear, tear tray idea for you. And I glued that right to the front. Now I wanted to have a few pumpkin leaves and I just picked up some leaves here um, just from some plants that I had from Dollar Tree. They weren't really the right color. So I'm actually just going to kind of mute those with a little ivory paint, wiping off the excess with a paper towel. And it's gonna give me that soft green color that I was looking for because I needed a couple leaves just to decorate this area where I removed the little cardboard leaves before. It's gonna look way better. And then I'm gonna replace the little burlap ribbon up here at the top, just by hot gluing that on. Now the stem, I don't really like it being green, so I'm gonna go in there with a little bit of ivory to try to soften it up, and I still didn't like it. So I went back in with like some cashew color to kind of give it that tannish brown feel to make it not quite so colorful. And you can still kind of see the green through it. So I'm going in there with another coat. And here it is, our little happy Halloween buffalo check pumpkin. We're gonna put that right here in front on this tear tray. Now for filler, I'm gonna use some pumpkins from the Target Dollar Spot. Really love these because they're painted really nicely, better than the ones from the Dollar Tree, but we're gonna be using some of those on this tear tray as well. And um, on to the next DIY. Sorry if the editing's a little choppy on this. This is an older video where I had to edit these on my phone. It was a lot more difficult to edit. 
and so it makes things a little bit choppier but I am just painting the inside of this little jack-o'-lantern candle holder from the Dollar Tree with ivory and stuff inside. And that's gonna make it, instead of the clear glass, it's gonna make it look more ceramic. Kinda gives it a different vibe. Then I'm going to light it up with the little LED candle from Dollar Tree to light it up. And it just has a more traditional vibe than the clear glass. And we're gonna sit that right here, decorating the second tier of this little farmhouse Halloween DIY. Now, the next item was from Dollar Tree as well. It looks like a wood pumpkin. It's got our monogram on there. So I think it's perfect. I don't think I really need to do anything to it. It's got a little burlap bow at the top and everything. And we're just gonna put it back here next to our little jack-o'-lantern candle. Now, remember this guy? This is another one of those little ghosts from the Dollar Tree. This one actually lights up though, cause it actually has a light in the bottom. So it kind of works like it should. And we're gonna put this here. It's a nice size for the second tier tray as well. Kind of peeking out the side. Now the next item I found at Dollar Tree is a little cauldron um, candle. Super cute, but it was really weird color. It was like green and white. So we're just gonna give it a quick Halloween makeover with some ink chalk paint by Waverly to give it that nice black cauldron feel. And you can see like the texture and stuff on there is really cool. And it has a poured candle in there as well. So this is a fun find for Halloween tear tray. It just needs to be a different color, I think. I really think it looks cute in the black and it looks way more traditional. And we're gonna put that right next to our little jack-o'-lantern. Now for some more filler, I thought we could use some of the black and white buffalo check pumpkins from Dollar Tree and some of the cream color ones as well. Because any of the areas that kind of need something on the tear tray, I want to fill them up with pumpkins for Halloween. So we're going to go ahead and take all those. I'm also going to do some of this size as well. Why not? And kind of fill up any of the areas that need something just with pumpkins. Okay, this is my favorite DIY from this tear tray. We're gonna take this cute little doll from the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. We're gonna take her dress off, her shoes off, and we're gonna give her a witch makeover. So I wanted my witch to have green skin. I'm using this color of green. I'm trying to remember what shade of green this is. If I still have it, I will try to find it and link it below because I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but I thought it was a perfect color for witch skin. And I'm just using a tiny brush and trying to avoid her eyes. We're going and painting her entire face green to make her look like a little witch. Now I know you're like, that does not look like a witch. She has like a pink dress, blonde hair, but just wait, when we're done with her, she's gonna look like the cutest little witch you've ever seen. But she's gonna need to have all of her skin painted green because her dress, we're gonna reuse that. And um, instead of making her new clothes, um, shows a lot of skin, so all of her skin is going to need to be green. So we're just going to go over her arms and her legs and the rest of her body with the green paint as well. And again, I, I tried to avoid her eyes just because they're really cute already. And I didn't want to have to repaint that area, but all of her flush color, I definitely want it to be that green color. Now to make her witch outfit, we are just going to use that black ink chalk paint to actually paint her actual little pink dress and make it black so it'll look like a witch costume, right? So chalk paint works really great on fabric. Um, I just soaked it all the way through, trying to get all the different layers of her skirt and stuff as well. Anything that's gonna be visible from the outside, I want that to be black, and I, including her shoes. So she has these little pink slide-on shoes that come off, and so I go ahead and paint those with that same ink chalk paint to make those look nice and witchy. I'm using a fine tip Sharpie to kind of touch up her eyebrows that I may have painted over and any eyelashes that might've got some green painted on it as well. Now she's got really cute hair, but once I took out like all of the ponytails, she's kind of a little bit bold on top, but that's okay because we're gonna put a witch hat on her anyway, but I went ahead and took all of her hair out so we could paint it. Now, when I was a little girl and I used to dress up as a witch, I, we always had the best witch costumes. My mom had the long gray wig 
um, that we would wear with our witch costume, which was a wig that she had ordered that came in totally the wrong color. And it was this creepy color of gray. So this makes me smile because it reminds me of dressing up as a witch as a child. So this is just the elephant chalk paint. And I just paint all of her beautiful blonde hair until she has like a full head of gray witchy hair. And yeah, so ever since then, I just think witches should have gray hair, I guess. <laughs> I don't really want to have gray hair, but <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and slide my little dress back on her. The Velcro and everything still works on the back. And she has her little outfit as good as new, but now it is nice and black. It's touching up her hairline there. Got a little gray on her face. Going to pop her little shoes back on. Touching them up, making sure they're all black, no pink. And then, of course, every witch needs a witch hat. These are the little witch hat picks from Dollar Tree, just the right size. I picked the little black and orange witch hat for her and glue that on the top of her head, which does a great job of covering up her bald spot there. And then all of her gray hair can flow out. And this is how she turned out. I told you she was going to be cute and adorable little green witch for this traditional tear tray. She's the star of the show, so we're going to put her right here in the front of the middle tier so that everybody can see her. How cute is she? Love it. Okay, on to the bottom tier. I'm going to make a really cool little um, haunted house scene by using one of these little plaque signs again from the Dollar Tree. I really love these. And I'm going over the whole thing first with ivory. And then we are actually gonna cover that up with burlap, but I wanted to have an ivory base just because of the holes in the burlap, you're gonna be able to see through it a little bit. And I wanted like the frame of the sign to be that pretty ivory color. I'm just using a roll of burlap that I had from Walmart, but you can always use burlap from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just trying to cut that down to size to cover the very front of the plaque. I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of hot glue. It doesn't take very much to attach this. You could always Mod Podge this as well. And I wanted that to be a really cute little background for a haunted house. And we're gonna use the little black haunted house candle holder that you see there from Dollar Tree to do that. It's not on there great, like it's kind of soldered on to a little candle holder. But I thought with a little heat and a little muscle, we could pop that off because the little black um, metal haunted house was super cute. So I think the heat kind of worked better than anything, but you probably are going to have to go in there with some tools, kind of work it back and forth. And then I decided just to cut mine off because it was causing me trouble. <laughs> it was such a thin metal I could cut through it with those KitchenAid scissors, which a little great tip. And then I just hot glued that onto the burlap. And then every haunted house needs a bat. So I'm going to use one of these little bat um, clothespins from the Dollar Tree. I don't need a clothespin on there though, so I'm going to try to pop that off without breaking it. Second time worked a little bit better. And we can paint this little guy black and we can have a little black bat flying in the sky above our little haunted house. And I think the burlap and the ivory and the black works great with um, the color scheme we've got going on with this more farmhouse traditional um, tear tray. And again, I'm using a five below Jenga block on the back to make it stand up. And we have our little haunted house sign. We're gonna put this on the bottom tier. It barely fits, but it does up on its side. Now I got this little pumpkin at Dollar Tree. It's got our monogram on it. It's orange. It's got a burlap ribbon. Color's perfect. Don't have to do anything to it. And it's a perfect size down here for the bottom of our tear tray. And as you can see, I did that ribbon on all three tiers. Now I want to make over this little tinsel pumpkin that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm not a fan of the tinsel, but I do like the cages. Now I went ahead and removed this stem and I'm removing the little um, cardboard pieces for the little jack-o'-lantern face. But I'm actually going to leave the orange tinsel on there because I think we can cover it up. Now I'm going to use one of these little jack-o'-lantern um, canvas uh, treat bags from the Dollar Tree to replace the face on that. And we can make this guy look a little bit better, I think, than the tinsel. 
Now, my first plan was to kind of cover the whole thing with this, but it really wasn't the right size, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm just separating the front and the back of the bag by trimming down the ribbon so I can get that whole panel there with a the little jack-o'-lantern face. These come in like two different faces, but they're pretty similar. And it's gonna be a great face for it, but it's not gonna cover up all that tinsel, kind of like I hoped. I tried to make it work and it just didn't wanna work for me. So I actually switched up to some orange burlap ribbon that I had from Dollar Tree and we're gonna switch that up instead. But if you wanted to piece together pieces of the back of that bag, you could probably get it to work too. And so I just cut down a piece of the orange burlap ribbon to size and hot glued it directly on the tinsel. It did make this job a little bit easier not having to remove all that tinsel. And it actually did a pretty good job of covering it up. And we are just gonna cover the entire side of this pumpkin with that orange burlap ribbon. Now this was a wired ribbon, so I was having to trim it down a little bit if I wanted to overlap one piece into the next like that to make it look more seamless. And we're just gonna continue covering that entire back side just with the orange burlap ribbon. And my ribbon wasn't too wide, so it did take like four pieces to like cover the entire back here, but we made it work. And that's gonna be the back of our pumpkin. Now on the front, I just kind of have to do the side pieces where you would still be able to see tinsel behind that face that we're gonna replace. So I just cut down like a side piece out of the ribbon, just like that cutting those down to size, kind of cutting that at an angle to go around the angle of the side of our pumpkin. And this does seem like a lot of work, but it actually turned out so cute in the end that I think it was worth it. Now for the face, we're gonna use that bag that we planned on before. Um, just need to kind of trim it down to size. I went ahead and cut a hole for the stem so I could kind of wrap it around a little bit so I could get the face right where I want it hot gluing that to the base of the little pumpkin, and then just trimming off the excess material. And I'm just trying to make that kind of blend in with the, with the um, burlap that we did on the sides. So I trimmed down the excess, um, I had wrapped it around the stem and then I went ahead and trimmed it up, just gluing that all down to the burlap and stuff to kind of make it more seamless. Then for the rough edge around the side, I'm just taking some Dollar Tree twine and we are gonna just glue that all the way around, framing out the side of the pumpkin and covering up any um, rough areas that we have there and the transition. Then once we get up to the pumpkin stem, we can use that same twine to just wrap around the little pumpkin stem and kind of gluing it onto itself here at the top until you can cover all of the plastic and you can't see any of that anymore. So it did work in the end. I did have to kind of not do my original plan on this, but I love the burlap feel on there and I love that cute little jack-o'-lantern face. And so we made it work. Just trimming off my excess twine and here it is, our little farmhouse jack-o'-lantern. So sweet, it almost looks like a little stuffed animal. And we're gonna put it right here to the side of the bottom. I also found this little ghost at the Dollar Tree, but I thought it was a little tacky. So we're gonna give it a little makeover. He's just got too much stuff going on. He's got a boo word, he's got eyes and nose, a mouth. A ghost doesn't need that many details. And so carefully, I'm trying to use my heat gun to take off all that stuff. But as you can see, that fabric burnt a hole in it right there, but you know what? That's gonna be the back of our ghost anyway, so you're not gonna be able to see it. But I was just trying to get all that off there, and I wanted to kind of remake it a little bit better. I'm gonna glue my hole shut there so I don't have any fuzz coming out anyway. And then I cut an excess piece of fabric off the back and just ma made a little patch from that little fabric from the bottom, I guess. Now for our face, I'm just gonna use some black felt and we are just gonna cut down some little cute little eyes for a ghost. He's gonna be way more tasteful than the design they'd put on there. I think they got a little crazy decorating this little ghost, but I thought it was cute. The shape's cute, the burlap's cute. So I thought we can make a cute little ghost. Not cutting his circles, not as easy as you'd think. <laughs> and then I cut like an oval for the mouth and I think that's gonna be plenty of decor for him. 
So this is the other side of it, nice and clean. We're gonna hot glue his little eyes about here and his mouth right below. And I think he looks way better like this. What do you guys think? So our little burlap ghost, we're gonna put him over here. He goes nicely with that little jack-o-lantern that we just DIY'd. And then I need a little black cat. This is one of the little solar light black cats from Dollar Tree. It's super funny cause like its eyes light up like that. <laughs> Now mine was kind of chipped up, so I'm just gonna kind of touch mine up anywhere that's chipped with a little bit of black paint. And then I thought it looked a little industrial with those kind of eyes, so I thought we could soften it up a little bit with a little twine from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna hot glue that around his eyes to kind of mask that more metallic feel from the silver lining of those lights and to kind of give it a fun little um, farmhouse vibe with that twine. And I think he's gonna be really cute. I don't know how long he'll stay charged there, but being solar and all, but I think he's really cute even if his eyes don't shine. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other eye. Just trying not to get too much hot glue on him. His nose and mouth are like already super cute and he's just the right size for a tear tray, so I think he's gonna work. Gonna just burn off the fuzzies on that. And there's our little black cat with glowing eyes. And I think that's gonna finish off the bottom tier really nicely. I thought maybe a little bit more pumpkins as filler. And this is a really easy um, tier tray to do. Very traditional farmhouse vibe and very traditional Halloween colors as well. And here is a little look around this tear tray. I love the different burlaps. I think that looks very traditional, very farmhouse, very rustic. And the little monogram pumpkins from the Dollar Tree are so cute. There's my little witch. She's my favorite. Little black cauldron, candle is so cute. Our little jack-o'-lantern back there. I love the little ghost. And we have another little monogram pumpkin right here in back. But of course, the star of the show was my little green witch. I loved making her over. It was so easy to do and she turned out great. Up here on the top, we have our little happy Halloween pumpkin with a little ghost kind of peeking out from behind. But I think it's really cute and works well together and hopefully gives you some crafting inspiration for your Halloween tear tray. I really hope you enjoyed all of the Halloween tear trays today. I really had a great time making those. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps my videos reach more people. Comment your favorite tear tray below. I'm really interested to find out your favorite. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, here's the final reveal. Enjoy. <laughs>
so much for watching and I want to give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Fun members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Chobe, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Vernon Noctegal, Julie Miller, Nancy Warner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, and Pamela Wren. Thank you so much for supporting me here at Crafty Beach. I really appreciate you. And if you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy Halloween.